Hello, my name is Colin and welcome to part two of Blender 5 from the ground up. In this video, we're going to do a deep dive into learning better transform tools to manipulate the objects in your 3D scene. As a beginner, you might want to select and move or rotate or scale an object in your scene. So of course, I might select the cube in the middle of my scene, move my mouse over to the toolbar, select the move tool, and then go back to the object and drag one of the control handles. Likewise, I'll press control Z to undo that a couple of times. I might move my mouse over to the toolbar and use the rotate tool and move my mouse back over and rotate the cube in a specific axis. However, that process of moving your mouse back and forth is not ideal. And if you're a professional and you're optimized at using Blender, you wouldn't do that. So a more professional workflow of transforming objects very quickly in Blender is to use keyboard shortcuts. In case you're not aware, Blender, being a professional tool, has a lot of keyboard shortcuts. In fact, pretty much every operation in Blender has a keyboard shortcut, which means that every key on your keyboard and every combination of Control and that key, or Alt and that key, or Shift and that key, is also a different keyboard shortcut. So in Blender, the three most common operations, Move and Rotate and Scale, have keyboard shortcuts. What are they? I'll go ahead and press Control Z on my keyboard to undo my transformation. In fact, I'm gonna leave my selected tool on the default transform or selection box tool. Why? Because if I wanna move the selected cube, all I have to do is tap the G key on my keyboard. G stands for grab. You don't hold the G key down, you just select the object and tap G on your keyboard. And when you tap G, the object gets stuck to your mouse and you can move your mouse. And when you're happy where the cube is, you click, but hopefully you realize that when you do that, you are not controlling in a precise way at all the direction or the amount that you move that cube. In fact, because we're working in a 3D environment, but on a 2D screen, well, it's very hard to know exactly where I move the cube at all. So one way you can control this, one way you can mitigate the fact that you can't really tell how you're moving the cube, just to show you, if I orbit my view to some random user perspective view from the top down, diagonally looking down at my scene, if I tap G and move my mouse up and down on my screen as carefully as I can, I hope you can tell that I'm actually moving the cube diagonally because I'm looking at my scene diagonally from the first place. I'm not moving it perfectly up and down, I'm moving it on an angle. Okay, I'll go ahead and press escape and control Z. To mitigate this, I can use one of my flat orthographic views. In the last video in this series, I talked about the fact that you can use your number pad on the side of your computer keyboard to very easily switch between different flat views, like the perfect front or side or top. If you don't have a numpad on the side of your keyboard, don't worry, you can simply click on one of the axes ends, like where it says Z or X or Y, or even negative Y. In fact, negative Y, is your front view. Likewise, the X is the right view. And if you click on it again, it'll go to the opposite, the left view. Likewise, on your number pad, if you have one, the one key goes to your front view, the three key goes to your side, and the seven goes to your top view. If you look at your scene, let's say from the front and you tap G, well, now you know that you're moving the cube either up or down or left or right, but that's much more aware than in 3D because you know when you're moving an object from the front view that you're not moving it towards you or away from you because you can't see or move your mouse towards or away from you at all. It's perfectly flat. Likewise, if I go to my top view with the seven key on my numpad, and then I tap G on my keyboard, I know that I'm sliding this cube around essentially on the floor and I'm not moving it up and down. Okay, so I'll go ahead and press escape. If you want to rotate an object, I'll orbit my scene to some random user perspective view. If I wanna rotate an object, I can simply tap R. R for rotate. And if I tap R and move my mouse in a circle, you can see that I'm rotating my cube. But again, this is dependent on my view. I'm rotating the cube perpendicularly, if that's a word, from my view. So from this view, tapping R and rotating is different. I'll press escape from orbiting, let's say up here, from this direction. That's a different 
rotation on a different axis. So again, you will want to use your orthogonal front side top views. So if I go to my front view and I tap R, I'm going to be rotating actually precisely exactly on my Y axis, spinning around that green axis perfectly. Okay, I'll go ahead and press escape. Likewise, if I go to my top view and I tap R, well, I'm rotating around the Z axis because that's what I can see pointing at me right there. So I'm spinning the cube essentially on the floor. The third transformation tool is the scale tool and the keyboard shortcut for that is S. But this one's different. This one's nicer and easier. If you simply tap S with an object selected, a mesh object preferably, you can make the mesh by pulling the mouse away from you after you tap S or pushing it towards the middle of the object. Actually, that little orange dot is called the origin of the object. If I tap S, I can make the cube uniformly bigger or uniformly smaller without stretching it at all. In fact, if I press escape, I'll point out that using the scale tool itself doesn't allow you to do that nearly as easily. It's much easier to scale the object with the same proportions up or down just with the S key on your keyboard, so you don't need to worry about using your orthographic front side or top views for that. But there is a lot more to talk about here because you can really precisely control the movement or rotation or scale on any axis in your 3D scene and even control the number of degrees that you're turning or rotating an object quite easily using what are called modifier keys. If you type G or R or S, you can then use more keys on your keyboard after you type one of those letters. The first one I'll show you is the control key. If I type G on my keyboard and then I hold control down on my keyboard, well, the cube will snap to the grid. This grid is an even increment of one meter units. In fact, my default cube is two meters by two meters by two meters. So if I go to my front view and I tap G and then I hold control down, I can move the cube perfectly up to sit perfectly on that original grid floor using the control key. Likewise, if I go to my top view and tap the R key on my keyboard and then I hold control, when I move my mouse in a circle, because I tapped R, I'm gonna be moving or rotating the cube perfectly at five degree increments. You can see the amount of rotation up there. So if I press escape and do that again, R and then hold control, you can see I can rotate very precisely. Okay, five, 10, 15, 20, 25 degrees. I'll go ahead and press escape. Likewise, if I tap S on my keyboard to scale and hold control, I'll be snapping to 0.1 meter, in other words, 10 centimeter increments, and you can see the amount that I've scaled up there on the screen. Great. After you type G or R or S, you can actually type one of the three axes to limit your transformation to that axis. So if I type the G key on my keyboard, just from any random user perspective view, if I type G on my keyboard, but I know that I want to move the cube perfectly side to side, aka on the X axis, I can type after G the letter X. So I type G and then X, and now I can move the cube back and forth and it limits or constrains my movement to that X axis and I can click anywhere I want. Likewise, I can tap R and then an axis, X, Y, or Z. I'll tap Z on my keyboard to then rotate the cube only on that Z axis. And again, from any view that I'm looking at, I'm just looking at my scene from a random user perspective view. Likewise, if I tap S to scale and then I tap X, Y, or Z, I'll tap S and then Z on my keyboard, I can make the cube taller or squash it down to be very short and click when I'm happy with the transformation. So tapping G or R or S, and then I type an axis, either X or Y or Z, I can constrain that transformation to that axis, which is great. But it gets even deeper than that, because if I know that I want to move or rotate or scale by a certain distance or degrees of rotation or a multiplier of size, like two times the height of the original cube or one half 0.5 times the original height or width or depth of the cube, I can do that. Let's do a quick demo. If I press control Z to undo and I type G and then I type X, of course, I can move only on the X axis, but then if I type three and press enter, I know exactly how I've transformed that cube. I have moved the cube over on the X axis exactly three meters 
one, two, three, you can tell exactly what I did. If I press Control Z to undo that, I can do the same thing with rotation, except if I type a number after the axis, so I'll type R and then Z, and then I'll type four, five for 45 and press enter. I know that I've rotated the cube on the Z axis exactly 45 degrees, and hopefully you can tell that that is the case. I will go ahead and press Control Z though to undo. If I type S to scale, and then I type, let's say X, and I type five, and then enter, I have scaled the cube to be five times the original width. Likewise, if I press Control Z and tap S and then Z and then 0.5 and then press enter, I have made the cube half the original height. But what if I want to scale an object in two directions at the same time, but not the third direction, not the third axis? Well, I'm going to go ahead and press Control Z on my keyboard to undo my transformations. If I tap S and then Z to scale this cube down to make it shorter, I want to make a platform or a ground for, let's say, a character or perhaps the monkey head to sit on later. Well, I want to make my ground thinner like I have it right now. I scaled it down on the Z axis, but now I want to scale this ground to be still perfectly square, but I want to scale it on both the X axis and the Y axis at the same time. Can I do that? Well, right now I know that I can tap S to scale, that I can tap X on my keyboard to scale it only on the X axis, or I could, I'll press escape, I could tap S and then Y to scale it on the Y axis, but could I scale it on both the X and the Y at the same time without scaling it up and down as well? Yes, you can. If you tap S on your keyboard and then you type shift and the axis that you want to negate, the axis that you do not want to scale on. So I'll tap shift Z on my keyboard. So S and then shift Z. I can scale only on the X and the Y axis at the same time. And I can make that floor or that platform as wide and as deep as I want to. And then I can click. And of course I could have typed a number as well. So I'll do that again. I'll tap S and then shift Z and then I'll type five and enter. And I've made the platform five times as wide and deep, but left it at the original height that I'd scaled it down to a few moments ago. By the way, you can do this with the scale tool. You can grab between two axes, in other words, this little blue square right here, and you can scale on those two axes. But again, the keyboard shortcut is faster, so I'll press escape. I'm gonna go ahead and press X on my keyboard and delete this cube because I wanna show you something with a cylinder. So I'm gonna go up to the add menu, by the way, the keyboard shortcut for the add menu, if you don't want to move your mouse all the way up to the add menu, is shift A on your keyboard. If your mouse is in the 3D viewport and you press shift A, the add menu will come up exactly where your mouse is. So I'll press escape and do it over here. Shift A brings up the add menu. I'm going to add a mesh cylinder. By the way, when you add an object into your scene, it gets placed at the location of this little red and white and black. It's called the 3D cursor. It looks kind of like a gun crosshair, but that's where it goes. You can actually move the 3D cursor around your scene. I'm not going to show you that. You could try it for yourself. If you accidentally do move it somewhere else, you can reset it by pressing that same keyboard shortcut to zoom your view to your selected objects. It's shift C on your keyboard. Shift C will zoom so you can see all of your objects, but it'll also fix location of this 3D cursor to be exactly at 000 in your 3D world. So I've added a cylinder into my scene. I want to demonstrate a little problem that we have if you rotate an object and then you try to scale that object on a specific axis. So I'm going to go ahead and transform this cylinder to be a bit taller. I'm going to actually make it skinnier first. I think I'll tap S and then shift Z on my keyboard to make it thinner, but still be a circle. So I didn't squash it. I just made it uh, less wide and less deep at the same time. And then I'll go ahead and rotate the object, let's say on the Y axis. So R and then Y, and I'll click to make it rotate it just like that. What happens if I want to make this cylinder longer than it currently is, but after I've rotated it? Well, that will not work the way that you expect. If I tap S on my keyboard, what axis comes next? 
right? If I tap S and then I tap Z on my keyboard to scale on the Z axis, well, the cylinder is no longer pointed perfectly up and down on the Z axis, so it's not going to work the way that you want. In fact, because of the way that Blender mathematically transforms objects, it's not even going to do what you think. It, it makes it bigger in, in a kind of a weird way, but also stretches it out in a strange way. So how do you solve this problem? Well, it turns out that if you were to use the tools on your tool bar like move and rotate and scale i'll use the scale tool you can change the orientation of these control gizmos to match the local rotation of the object that you're trying to transform you can do that by going up to the header of your 3d viewport where there is this transform orientations little pull down menu by default all of your tools face and align with the global axes in your world up and down is the Z axis, side to side is the X axis, etc. But if you change this from global to local, you will see that your transform gizmo becomes aligned with the object that you have selected. I'll go over to my front view so you can see this a little bit more clearly. Now with this local option, I can drag on the handle of the Z axis for scaling and I can make the cylinder longer or shorter while it's rotated in my scene. But how do you do this with keyboard shortcuts? Because I don't want to use these tools and move my mouse and use the controller gizmos on my screen. So I'm going to leave this on global and I'll go back to my selection tool right there. You can scale on the local axis if you know how. How do you do that? Well, if I tap S on my keyboard to scale, but then I tap Z on my keyboard, it'll scale on the global Z axis. So what I can do instead is tap S and then when you double tap Z or keep tapping Z, it will cycle from global to local. You see how it told me up there what I was doing? I tapped S to scale and then Z along the global Z axis. And then I tap Z again to transform along the local Z axis. So now I can scale up and down, but as the object is rotated. Can I do that with other tools? Of course. If I want to rotate the object, the cylinder as it's rotated, but rotate it on the local Z axis, I can do that. I can tap R to rotate and then Z, Z, and I can spin it exactly as it is. So there's a lot of powerful keyboard shortcuts in Blender. We've only just begun to scratch the surface. Just one more to finish off this video. I'm going to go ahead and delete my cylinder. I'll press X on my keyboard and click on delete. I'm going to go up to the add menu. In fact, I'll press shift A on my keyboard and add a UV sphere. I'll go to my front view and move my UV sphere G and Z to move it up on the Z axis. If I want to duplicate my UV sphere and move it up. Let's say I want to practice using all these transform keyboard shortcuts to make, let's say, a snowman. Well, I would want to take this UV sphere and copy and paste it. And yes, you can do that. You can actually right click on a selected object and you get a whole menu, including copy and paste, which is the default control C and control V. However, it's easier to just use duplicate. Duplicate is shift D. And the nice thing about using duplicate, I'll press escape and then I'll press shift D is that it makes a copy and it grabs it for you. So I can simply now move it around and click to move and place the copy or I'll press control Z. Yes, I only have one again. If I press shift D on my keyboard, it's grabbed, but then I can tap Z on my keyboard to move it straight up. I'll put it right about there. But if I'm going to make a snowman, I can scale it down with the S key. I'll do it again. Shift D and Z on my keyboard to move it exactly up the copy that is, and I'll tap S to scale it down and maybe GZ to move it straight down. So I recommend that you play with all these transform keyboard shortcuts, all the modifier keys you can use after typing G or R or S. The key is just practice, practice, and play with all these keyboard shortcuts. Practice by making fun objects like snowmen, but I'll leave you with that. Thanks so much for watching. Please go ahead and click that like button and subscribe if you like this video or if you want to see more videos like this one in Blender. Thanks again. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.